Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Let's try that again. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, we are now officially live on Facebook, and so I want to welcome all of those people out there in wherever land that are watching us. We had uh, a watcher last night that had been here years ago it's in Wyoming watching us, and people from different parts of Texas. And so uh, since last night, about 90, 112 people watched the last night's service. So uh, we're out where we are welcoming those of you that are here, but we also want to welcome you that are not with us to come and join us in worship. Uh, we're located in Pasadena, Texas on uh, Holly Street and Lily Street on the corner. We're about a block and a half south of, uh, I mean, north of Spencer Highway and about uh, maybe three or four blocks on the east side of Preston. So we're not hard to find. Uh, you can find us at our website, which is www.hopecommunityumc.org. I have just normally several announcements, but today I really only have two. Uh, on Tuesday night we're at, at uh, 6 o'clock, we're going to have a board meeting uh, for the Administrative Council. It will be fairly short uh, because we're going to have a longer meeting on Saturday, which we're inviting everyone to come to. Uh, when I say everyone, I mean everyone. Uh, we've invited all the Saturday night folk, and we would hope that as many Sunday people as can can come as we talk about where we are, what we've accomplished at Hope Community UMC, and what we might accomplish this coming year, and how we might accomplish that. Uh, so I will, this invitation is for those of you that are members of the church, those of you that are sometimes visitors at the church, those of you that are members but don't come very often, but you might be watching us online, and maybe somebody's watching online that's never been here, and we would invite you to come as well. We will be uh, meeting at 10.30 right here in the sanctuary, and we will have some uh, light lunch to serve as we conclude our meeting at about noon. So we invite you to come to be a part of that. This is uh, the, the first Sunday of the new season of, of Epiphany, the, the uh, I mean, not Epiphany, Kingdom Tide, or, or, or uh, I can't, I'm going to stick with Kingdom Tide because I can't remember the other one right now. Uh, yesterday, or the 6th, was... Uh, Epiphany was the end of our Christmas season. It was the, when the, the however how many number of wise men came. And uh, today we're going to be celebrating about baptism and the, and the baptism of the Lord. So it is my joy to be with you today. Once again, welcome if you're online and welcome wherever you are here in the building. And we will uh, proceed with our worship except for one thing. Uh, let me ask this question in this way. Who in this room had a birthday in the last week? All right, so we got one back there and one over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to sing Happy Birthday. And then who we're singing this to is Gary. Gary, you're like, what, 22? Yeah, because Joe's 27. We figured that out already. Uh, we don't really discuss ages around here. Uh, we're going to sing Happy Birthday to these two. And since we can't really say Joe and Gary, we're just going to say y'all, okay? And AJ's going to lead us. Let's sing. <laughs> Thanks for being here with us and celebrating your birthday. We're always grateful to have birthdays whenever they come around. Uh, some of us look more forward to them than others. Yes, sir. Somebody had an anniversary this last week. Yeah, they did. But, but we celebrated that last week. Didn't celebrate it enough. Let's say happy anniversary. Oh, okay. Happy anniversary to supposed to celebrate stuff about me. This is not about me. Anyway, thank you for that. Oh, we're celebrating for... I, I see. I'm, I'll catch you before. You guys are mean. All of you. You're not supposed to be mean to your preacher. I could just leave. We won't let you. Oh, you won't let me leave. You know, my buddy Jim will help me. You'll help me get out of here, won't you, Jim? <laughs> Okay, well, we're ready to sing. Our first hymn today is Hymn of Promise. As you're able to, to sing and join us, would you stand as we sing?
be seated. Our first scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Acts. It's in the 10th chapter, beginning with verse 34. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality. But in every nation, anyone who fears Him and does what is right is acceptable to Him. You know the message He sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with Him. We are witnesses to all that he did in both Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses. And he ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thank Thanks be to God. God. As you're able, would you stand this morning as we repeat together the Apostles' Creed, as we testify to what it is we believe. My fellow Christians, what is it we believe? I believe in God, the Father, Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth. And in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day He rose from the dead, He ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence He shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. together as a church this morning. You are invited to come if you so want to to pray here at the altar rails. As we do this uh, time of reflection, we'll be singing, Here I Am, Lord. And you may remain seated.
Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we are here to begin a new year. So much of what you teach us and what you have taught us is about newness. So much of our lives have been spent, spent just settling for the way it's always been. But you've called us into new birth, new life, a new year, new beginnings. How will we respond? Newness means unknowns. Unpredictable things. Unknown consequences. In so many ways, God, we're afraid to be new. It's much more comfortable to just do it the way we've always done it. It's much more comfortable to just sit back and let it be like it is. But then, God, we read your scriptures, we hear your spirit calling us and tugging at us to know that like it's always been was good when it always was, but it's no good now. So today we gather in this place. We have our normal list, God. We ask for healing for those that are sick. Peace for those that are troubled. And we ask you now to guide us. To have us have faith in understanding that this isn't about us, it's about you. And you've always used unlikely, not expected circumstances to bring about change and growth. And so God, we today submit ourselves to you for that. Just like Jesus came and healed on the Sabbath, talked to sinners, created community, we feel you calling us to do that as well. So it is with some fear, a little bit of trepidation, not necessarily knowing what's in the future, that we gather together today to pray the prayer that you taught us, which says, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. In just a few minutes, I'll be inviting the ushers to come forward for the collection of our gifts, tithes, and offerings. Uh, just one more reminder, next Saturday, 1030, if you can be here, we sure want you to be. So we can talk about what we're going to be doing as we try to fulfill God's goal for us in the coming years. This time, I'll invite the ushers to come forward for the collection of our gifts, tithes, and offerings. Let us pray. Gracious God, as you have given us so much and ask so little of us, we now give to you what was always yours. We ask you to take it and use it to magnify your name, to glorify God in this community and throughout the whole world. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Let us stand. Today I'm going to be preaching about baptism, so we're going to sing a baptism song. We've sung it before on, Baptist, on Communion Sundays. Uh, I want you to pay particular attention to the words. It's a, it's a really powerful hymn. It's not hard to sing, so I think you'll, you'll catch on to it pretty quick if you don't remember it. Uh, you may remain seated as we sing. Friends, as you're able, would you stand for the reading of the gospel? Reading from the gospel of Matthew in the third chapter. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, let it be so now. For it's proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. And you may be seated. So when I was in seminary, I went to Mexico two different years on baptism of the Lord Sunday. I had to work in a church where I didn't understand the language. I had to listen to sermons where I understood a few words. Espiritu Santo, I got that. Oración, I can get that. My Spanish isn't great. But I understood about the Holy Spirit and about prayer. There is kind of a universal language in the church. And the preacher talked about this. It was it, it were two different preachers, two different times, and it was interesting to hear them talk about it. The number one message they tried to reveal, I'm going to ask you the question, does baptism save you? No. no. Well, that was a, a sort of a good answer. Let's see if we can do better. Does baptism save you? No. 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 We need to accept the Lord. Does anybody have a question in that? Baptism does not save you. It didn't save Jesus either. Why do we do baptism? Why do we do it? Now the official wording, the one Carol, your dad knew, 
It's, it's an outward and spiritual grace. No, it's, it's an outward and spiritual... No, I can't even say it now. It's an outward and spiritual sign of an inward and spiritual grace. That's what, what it is. But it's more than that, isn't it? It's kind of like, remember when, when you, whether you were a boy or a girl, you played out in the neighborhood and somebody was picking up sides to go play stickball, you know? And, and so, so one guy says, I'm going to be the leader. And another one says, I'm going to be the leader. And suddenly you stick your hand up and say, I'm going to be on their team. Really, that's what baptism is. Do you want to be on God's team? And if you do, are you ashamed of it? Or are you going to stand up in front of somebody and tell them? But it also means new birth and new change and new things to happen in the future. Supposed to be, when you do that, I mean, none of us, none of us are going to have the heavens open up and have a dove come down, I don't think. If they do, I won't see it. But what I do think is that it's supposed to be a time when I make a decision to be God's team, God's child, one of the children of God, I'm going to do stuff different. I mean, really, if you've been playing for the, the, you know, the Houston Texans all this time, you get drafted over to the Cowboys, you can't go in wearing a Texas jersey. My favorite team is in there somewhere. You'll pick out which one it is. I mean, nobody would go from the Cowboys to the Texans, but anyway, never mind. <laughs> oh, if the money's right, they might, I guess. So. So, so many times baptism is just that thing that, they, oh, well, you know, if you get baptized, you're good to go. And there are other denominations where they would interchange being saved with being baptized. Not here. One of the things that happens in, in the other passage is that we start to realize that Jesus came, and, and it was in Acts when we started to realize that He didn't come for just a select few. He didn't come for just the chosen ones. He came for everybody. And so many times we in the church have held baptism up as something this, this it is sacred. It's one of our two sacraments, but we've held it up as this thing that you have to be qualified to get it. I don't understand why you need to be qualified to get it. If you've been baptized in the name of the Trinity, the God the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, in any denomination out there, your baptism is good here. Biblically, it says one baptism for the remission of sin. It doesn't say one baptism so we can join the church, although you do have to be baptized to join the church. I mean, the baptism is the gateway to the church. So many of you will remember, some of you won't, because I was baptized as a child an infant. I do not remember it. I know the story. The preacher's name was Reverend Jim Argue. I was handed over to him. I screamed, hollered, and kicked him the whole time. And then when I got old enough, I went to confirmation and I said, I'll accept it. When I went to be ordained, they said, how do you remember your baptism? I said, because of the stories. I've done a few in Mexico, I did several, and I've done a few here of, of, of baptisms for people that came out of a different tradition. I'll never forget this one. They brought the baby up, and they brought a box with it. And, and, and in the box was a little Bible. It was a little candle. We lit the candle. And there was a little shell. They wanted to use the shell. In the United Methodist Church, we baptize by sprinkling. We will do immersion. Not in this bowl, of obviously, but we will do immersion and we will also do pouring. Any of those are okay. It's in the name of the Trinity. We're good with it. So we used the little shell and poured the water on the baby's head three times in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Then we lit the little candle and it stayed lit for a while. And then when it was all over, they packaged all that stuff up and put it in this little box and they kept it. And the value is that is, you know how it is when you're little and you want to dig through the stuff that you got in the house, you, know, you open up. That little boy or little girl is able to get it and say, what is all this? And mom and dad can say to him, that was about your baptism. We don't really hang on and we get a certificate. But we really don't hang on to it. It, 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 the, the, the power that I have, the power that you have to be a minister of the gospel comes because you're on the team because you got baptized. So in the United Methodist Church, 
when someone presents themselves for baptism, we say something like this. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the sacrament of baptism were initiated into Christ's holy church. We're incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water of the Spirit. All of this is God's gift offered to us without price. It says nothing about Hope Community United Methodist Church. It says nothing about Pastor Jack. This is God's gift. It's a gift you got. And then when you want to actually do it, we ask this question. I'm going to ask this question of you. Uh, if you've been baptized, then answer the question. If you haven't, we can talk later if you're interested in that. But right now, I want if you've been baptized, I want you to answer this question as I ask you. And the answer would be, I do, if you choose to approve. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness? Do you reject the evil powers of this world? And do you repent of your sin? I do. I do. do. I love this part. Do you accept the freedom and the power that God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? I do. I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior? Put your whole trust in His grace and promise to serve Him as your Lord in union with the church, with Christ as open to people of all ages, nations, and races. I do. I do. <laughs> so here's the deal. You heard me say already one baptism. That's all we do. We don't rebaptize. Well, we can remember our baptism. And if you're like me and you were little, you don't remember it. You can remember it anyway. Remember your baptism. I got to get your way over there, Rosemary. Remember your baptism. <laughs> Remember your baptism. You're hiding, taking off glasses. Everybody's getting ready for this. Remember your baptism. Brothers, remember your baptism. Be holy. And sisters in the back. Gotcha. There's a few people in here I baptized, too. She hasn't been. Well, that can happen any time. <laughs> that can happen any time. Jim, remember your baptized baptism. Be holy. Sue. <laughs> I'll get you later. Oh, I got more to get. People are hiding in the corner. Remember your baptism, man. I'm going to stay away from the electronics. Remember God's baptism. <laughs> It's fun. It's fun. It's serious. <laughs> so many times we have gone into our Christian life and just been mundane and boring. In fact, friends, what we've done is we've just settled for the way it always was. <laughs> Why do we do that? Because it's comfortable. We don't make any waves. We don't test any water. We're not known for being radical. Especially Methodists. We're known for being the frozen chosen. Once in a while we smile a little bit if the preacher tells a pretty good joke. But we have been invited and joined the most revolutionary, important movement that ever happened on this planet. 
We have signed up to be on the team. I'm not talking about joining the church. That's a different story. I'm talking about we've signed. This means we're on the team. We, we wear the jersey. And when we go to the grocery store, when we go to the gas station, and when we go to the doctor's office, we go to the other places, we live it out. And we look at the other people of the world and say, you know, God loves them too. For me, that's been hard sometimes. It's been really hard sometimes to just really believe that every single person I see is really a creation of God. Some of them, I'm not sure they weren't hatched. But I'm wrong. I'm wrong when I do that. So one of the things that I began to understand about baptism is, you know, we hold it up, it's sacred, it's special. We, we you know, it's one of the two sacraments of the church. I had a friend that told me the story about when he got baptized. He wasn't really intended to get baptized that day. In fact, he wasn't even intended to do anything except see some pretty girls at church. He had met some pretty girls out in his sister's swimming pool at her apartment. He said, where do you get to meet them? And she said, down to church. So he went. I mean, God can use handsome men and pretty girls for God's purposes, right? And so he was in church and the preacher preached and he kept nudging his sister and said, did you tell that preacher about me? Yeah. Y'all ever felt that sometimes when the preacher's preaching? You say, I think he's talking to me. That's God, not me. I don't judge. <laughs> so during the, the message, he, he was inclined when they gave the invitation at the end, just like we do. You know, we opened the doors of the church. They gave the invitation and he got out and he went down front. And, and the preacher, it was Baptist church, and the preacher said to him, well, what are you here for? He said, I, I'm, I'm giving my life to God. He said, okay, you want to be baptized? He said, yeah. So they dismissed the people, invited any that wanted to stay to stay, and they put him up in the baptistry in the Baptist church. Well, they dumped him. First time, whoosh, bring him up. He said, what do I do now? He said, hold your hands up, say praise the Lord. That's what he did. Second time, what do I do now? Said, hold your hands up, say praise the Lord. Talked to him the third time. What do you do now? Hold my hands up, say praise the Lord. Okay, you know, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, you are baptized. Go forth. He got out of the baptistry, walked down the steps, and fell down with convulsions. They went and got the senior pastor and said, what's wrong with him? He said, I think God's doing a work on him. <laughs> and some things about his demeanor, his life, his meaning changed that day. And what he would tell you is some of them took longer to work out. Some years later, I was working as an associate pastor. The preacher baptized one child and not the other in a family. It caused great, great distress for the family. I mean, we know baptism doesn't save you, so it shouldn't have been any distress, but there is a difference. There's a difference in being on the team and not, right? And so what happened was they came to me and they said, well, pastor, what's going to happen? This, this person's been baptized. This one hasn't been. And I said, well, you know, they're going to be fine. That's not what saves you, but I should have never had to make that explanation. They should have both been baptized that day, in my opinion. The Ethiopian eunuch is riding along in a, in a chariot. He says, can I see water? Can I get baptized? They did not say, well, let's go to a class. Let me see if I can teach you about the four steps of being a baptist. I don't know. They didn't do any of that. They just said, yeah, get in the water. We'll baptize you. I want to tell you, friends, it's a God thing, not a preacher thing. It's a sacrament. We mean that to us. That means it's of God. It isn't me. I'm here. I get to do it because the church ordained me as an elder of the United Methodist Church. I am permitted and authorized and expected to do baptisms. And we have churches all around our conference that won't have any baptisms this year because they don't talk about it. They don't offer it. You don't need to know everything you're going to know to be a Christian to be baptized today. Or next week. We don't have a limit. You don't have to schedule it. 
If you're moved to be baptized and you haven't been, then come up at the end of the service. We will baptize you. And if you can't wait till the end, then come up right now. But we are Methodists, right? We schedule stuff. I remember when my oldest son was ready to be baptized. We called the church, made arrangements that happened on a certain day. The senior pastor came and called me the next Sunday. He said, hey, Jack, I'm going to be out of town that week. Would you like to reschedule the baptism? And I said, well, is there going to be a preacher here? Well, he said, yeah. I said, does it need to be you? Is it about you or is it about the baptism of my son where God is going to do that? And I don't really care if it's you or any other preacher that does it. Let's just get it done. You see, no matter who we are, we can be a preacher or we can be the, the chairman of the trustees. We can be whatever we want to be. Sometimes our ego gets in the way. I got to tell you, there's nobody in this room that's better than anybody else in this room. I get to stand up on a platform for two reasons. One is I'm short, and the other is because I can see all of you. Maybe you're not aware of this, but if I can see you, I mean, if you can see me, I can see you. When your eyes close, I know. <laughs> now, those people that watch it online, I can't see you. But I can visualize what you look like sitting right here. I've got y'all all on the front row. Baptism. Why did Jesus get baptized? Because he needed to set the example for us on what it takes to understand what it means to be on the road to righteousness. You got to want to be on the road. And all of us at some point in time, either as babies and later confirmed it or as grown-ups, we all said we want to be on the road. But frankly, do we look like we're on the road? Are we still judging people? Are we still afraid of the future? Oh, it's a scary time. This, this whole world has changed in such dramatic fashion in, I don't know, three years. I mean, it has changed. That young football player got hurt the other day where he, he died on the field. They resuscitated him. Do you realize that there were, he was surrounded by, I don't know, I'm guessing 20 and 30 year olds surrounded him? There's no 40 and 50 year olds playing football except for Tom Brady. <laughs> Do you realize that probably nobody standing in that circle around him had ever been in the presence of somebody that physically died before? Think about it. It's been traumatic on those people because they've never seen it. My mother and dad were born in 1919, probably saw death often in their community. Nowadays, we've sterilized it, haven't we? Let's just put them in a home, get a caregiver. Some of you know I used to preach at Happy Harbor every Sunday afternoon. Friends, I saw a lot of that. I saw a lot of people that had no family and nobody. I was 51 years old before I ever stood next to somebody in my family that died. I know for a fact my mother had cousins when she was 13 and 17 that died. They used to put the body in the living room at home. They didn't hide from it. We, you know, you know, we, we, have, we have really settled into this life of just whatever they tell us we're going to buy it. Jesus was a revolutionary. They expected him to be a revolutionary with guns and swords and, and armies. That's not how we're going to win. Wesley taught us. John Bunyan taught us. A lot of the old guys from the church, they taught us the way we're going to win is a grassroots movement of people we change and then they have to change. We pay attention then they have to hear us. We live the life God gave us. We honor these vows. We renounce evil and wickedness when we see it. <laughs> I was in an exercise one time. I think I've told you this. We had to act out renouncing. Some people did this. They turned their back on it. That's exactly what we've done. We've turned our back on sin and evil. We need to face it head on, friend. We need to face it. 
We don't have to be like that. Do we? I don't want to be. I want to be different than that. I want to be known for being that one person out there that finds a way to live life without anxiety and fear and pressure. I want to realize that I'm valued. My, my spirit is valued by God and He gave me this spirit to use it, to share it, and to be a part of other people's lives, not to hoard it up and keep it in a closet. And I believe He gave that to you too. In fact, I believe that so strongly that I believe every solution we have to every problem that faces us in the future can be found if we start with Jesus Christ. Every solution. If we can get politics and money out of the scenario and we can start to look at it, how would Jesus approach health care? How would Jesus approach the economy? How would Jesus... You don't want to know how he would approach the immigration thing. <laughs> I can tell you that. You don't want to know how he would approach that. But I believe that Jesus can lead us, that he can teach us, that he can show us the way. But... but We've got to be on the team. And it's not just during an hour game on Sunday. It's an everyday thing. It's, we've made a commitment. Remember what this says. I confess Jesus Christ as Savior. I put my whole trust in His grace. I promise to serve Him as and promise to serve Him as Lord in union with the church. That means together, which Christ is open to who? To all people of all ages, races, colors, whatever. I like to talk about baptism. I'm sad that we don't see more. But maybe that's our fault. Maybe people think you have to stand a certain way or wear certain clothes or have a certain idea to come to this church to be baptized. Maybe people think there are strong rules. I don't know. But I know the church ordained me to come here and order the church, to serve the church, to baptize, and to serve community. Because those things are supposed to bring us together in community, and I believe community is Jesus' way of saving the world. To our friends that are watching on YouTube or on Facebook, I want you to know you're welcome here. We would love to have you come. We don't care. We're not going to ask you any questions. We just would love to have you come. So at 5.30 on Saturday night or 11 on Sunday, you could come. You'll be welcome. We've got a chair for you. See, you can drink coffee in here if you want to. We will take care of you. We would love to have you come see us. But we're grateful that you've invited us into your phone or iPad or computer or living room, wherever we are today. We love you. We care about you. And we want you to know this church, not just not me, I'll prove it. If this church is willing to love you, whoever you are, y'all say amen, okay? Amen. amen. All right, see, they're here, and they believe it too. I read this scripture every year or so when it comes up. I think about the times that I've been a part of infant baptisms, grown-up baptisms. The times I've seen people come crying, giving their life to Christ, and the other time when the people were... No, they were okay with it. And sometimes because a teenager said, well, you know, I really want to. Some years ago, a young lady who was nine years old, she came to me, or actually she didn't come to me, her mom and, mom and dad came to me and they said, uh, I knew them casually. We, they were not church members, I just knew them casually. They said this young lady was nine, she was going to a Christian school. Her teacher asked her the question, asked the same question I might ask someday, who's baptized, who's not? She didn't raise her hand. The teacher said, pointed her finger at her and said, you realize if you're, not, if you're not baptized and you die, you're going to hell. That's really what somebody ought to tell a nine-year-old, don't you think? So mom and dad had questions. They brought her over and we sat down for about two hours to talk. I explained to her all I've just explained to you. Baptism doesn't save you. It wouldn't make you go to hell or not go to hell. What baptism does is it, it is an outward and visible sign 
of an inward and spiritual brokenness. It was kind of funny how it worked out. She said, well, I want to be baptized. Can you do that tonight? I said, absolutely. <laughs> so I looked at mom and dad. How about y'all? I mean, you know, you can figure this out if you've been around for a little while. You've got a nine-year-old that hadn't been baptized. It probably might not have been something mom or dad did either. <coughs> and that night in this church, right there on that rail, we baptized the whole entire family. And I've been a part of that family ever since. I'm so grateful to God that I get to be a part of families for things like that. Oh, of course I want to be with families when there's death involved, but being a part of newness, new birth, new life. That's the exciting part of ministry. New Christians, we need more of them. They have enthusiasm and excitement. They are not frozen in the chosen. Amen. New Christians. Oh, they got stuff to learn. We get to teach them. We get to hold their hand and walk alongside them. And sometimes it's scary, isn't it? It really comes down to it, you know. Are you just going to settle for the way it's been? Or are you going to realize that we're living in a time that's entirely different than the way it used to be? Entirely different. Nowhere near the same. These students can tell you you don't have to carry as many books to school as you used to. They got an iPad. Remember when we had to do that? Carrying books, putting glasses? You needed a wheelbarrow. Things are changing. And I believe that God has destined us to be a part of the change, to reach into the future of this community and find ways to inject God into the things that are going on here, even sometimes if it means that we don't understand why it's going to work. I don't understand baptism. God does that. I don't understand the mystery of communion. With the, I know it's still bread. It's still grape juice. But I know when, when the preacher says those words, make this be for us, the body and blood of Christ, somehow it becomes special. There is a holy mystery. Friends, church is a holy mystery. Your life is a holy mystery. None of us are guaranteed anything past a few minutes from now. But our life is a holy mystery being lived out because we stood up or sat down or knelt down and said, God, we want to be on the team. We want to be one of your children. Now that you know what you signed up for, who wants to stay? It's a tough choice, isn't it? Or is it? We spend so much time trying to get to heaven, sometimes we forget about what it might be like to bring heaven to somebody that's hurting right here on this planet right now. That's our calling. Are you all in? Amen. Amen. I hope so. Because the church that I'm going to serve, I hope, is going to be a church that doesn't judge, that reaches out, that loves when love doesn't even seem like it's appropriate and that offers mercy and grace to any and everyone. And I really know most of you, I think that's the church you want to be a part of too. And to you folk online, if you want to be a part of it, here we are. We'd love to have you. If you can, come on Saturday. We're going to talk some more about it. Won't be any preaching. Don't have to worry about that. Might be a little devotional. No preaching. Remember your baptism. Really, think about it. If you were an infant, then find somebody that can tell the story. Remember that that singular event, it can be put on a document and sometimes can be used for identification purposes with even like the IRS. It is not an insignificant event that happened when you were a kid. It's a significant event that has a destiny for the kingdom of God in this community and throughout the world. And I'm sure glad y'all are on the journey with me. Remember your baptism. 
and be holy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So today, as we close our service, if you feel led, actually, I know about this. George, you want to do it? Yeah, yeah just come, before we sing, come on up here. This is George Bounce. George has been around off and on for a very long time. Uh -huh. uh, let's go right over here, because it's going to be more convenient for me. So I happened to see George this morning. We were talking about baptism. I said, have you ever been baptized? He said, no. Yes, I know it. And so I said, what a great day. What a great day to do it right now. So George, why don't you go ahead and kneel right there. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness and reject the evil powers of this world and repent of your sin? Yes, I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Do you confess that Jesus Christ is your Savior, put your whole trust in His grace, and promise to serve Him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? Okay, then I'm going to set this down. You have a middle name, George? Gregory. Gregory? Yeah. Well, I probably did, but yeah. on Sunday morning, I don't remember much. <laughs> okay, George, get ready for this, my friend. It's going to happen a few times. George Bounds, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, I baptize you. It's my honor to baptize you. I pray God's riches and blessings on you from now and through all of eternity. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. All right, friends, it would be appropriate to welcome him if you're done. Uh, I did say sprinkle. I did say sprinkle. Okay, so George, George is going to be in the back. You can shake his hand afterward and welcome him. He's going to be drying out. He's drying out. <laughs> uh, yeah, we, don't, we do sprinkle, but uh -huh, yeah. sometimes I do a little more than that. Yeah. I had more to wash off. Is that what you're You'll be able to remember it. That's the point. Oh, yeah. Friends, as you're able, would you stand as we sing together? Blessed be the tie that binds. Blessed be the last part of our baptismal ritual today. I'm going to reword it just a little bit. With God's help, we, the church, will proclaim the good news. With God's help, we'll live according to the example of Christ. With God's help, we'll surround this community with a community of love and forgiveness that they may grow in their trust of God and then be found faithful in their service to others. We leave today praying for others.
praying that those around us, those within this church, and all who walk with us will be true disciples. We say all this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Go in peace.